I've never filmed one of these in the AM. Also, my car is completely frosted over. Yeah, I'm gonna have to defrost this thing. Oh yeah, I got my ice scraper in the back, eh? Very Midwest of you, riding shotgun today. We'll deal with that in a second. Anyways, welcome back to another episode of the series I like to call Never Have I Ever. It's where I go to fast food places, restaurants, sometimes the products come to me, and I try things off of menus that I would never try. Today I'm gonna take a bite out of it and give you a review and be like, this what's up? This good? This bad? We need to make a call. People shouldn't even be seeing this on the menu. What the heck? Today maybe you could tell, I don't know about my sweatshirt, by the title, or maybe by the fact that we go to this place a lot. We're doing Dunkin'. I go to Dunkin' as often as I should be going to the gym. Me and Dunkin' look like two friends who are insufferably inseparable. Me and Dunkin', we like this. We should be like the, I need to say, I need to stop spending money, but we like this. Me and Dunkin' are like two coffee beans shaking around an empty cup. Said fill her up. But our main focus today is the breakfast food, which I really do not partake in. Maybe a hash brown here or there. Before we go try it, I like to do fun facts. I feel like I have a more appropriate outfit for this part of the video. Let me just, or just, is it a snap? What was I doing? Was it like a rub your belly, tap your head sort of thing? G Abracadabra. I gotta figure out what the signal is. <laughs> oh, Jay. Okay, that's what the signal, who would change the signal? It's a sneeze now? Look at me. I'm a cup of Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Look at that, I'm a little cold brew. I'm a little straw. Sometimes you gotta, this is weird. Sometimes you gotta like massage the straw. I'm the biggest cup of coffee you have ever seen. Stirred, not shaken. I'm filled with sugar and cream, no spice. Maybe something nice. Now that we're situated, let's go over the Dunkin' facts, okay? Dunkin' is a multinational coffee and donut chain. If you don't know, you get coffee, you get donuts, they got breakfast items. Dunkin' Donuts was found in 1948 as Open Kettle. That's what it used to be called, Open Kettle. Donut shop by Bill Rosenberg in Quincy, Massachusetts. Which is, it sounds about right because the East Coast is really known for Duncan. okay? They like their Duncan out there. But like, what's Bill's deal, really? Let's get into it. Bill was born in Boston. He's one of four kids. His parents were Jewish German immigrants from Prussia. He started industrial luncheon services. That's what he called it. Took his truck and kind of converted it into like a food truck and delivered meals and coffee and snacks to factory workers on the the outskirts of Boston. Smart man! Within a short amount of time, he had 200 trucks doing this. Supply and demand. 40% of his revenue came from coffee and donuts alone, so he started Open Kettle. And it was like a coffee and donut shop. He had 52 types of donuts. I don't even know 52. Boston cream, French curler, sprinkles, long john, curd, a curd donut, a custard donut. I mean, a, what's a curd donut? <laughs> a cheese curd donut? I would try a cheese curd donut. After five or six of these shops popped up, he franchised. Wow, right away, 1955. Look at this turn of events. 1963, his son Bob became CEO. Guess how old Bob was? Good old Bob. Robert. Bobbert, if you will. 25. He's 25 years old. What was I doing at 25? I don't know. Bopping around. I could barely afford to go get a cup of coffee at Dunkin'. He was the CEO! And he was the CEO for 35 years. Oh my god! They didn't just like make him boss for the day and they're like, you know what? Too young. Too inexperienced. What is he doing? Okay, he also worked at Sonic and Domino's. I don't remember in my research if he like worked like on the business side or he actually worked at Sonic. Hello, this is Sonic. You like... Slushies? 1970s, they introduced the munchkin. Do you, if you don't know what a munchkin is, they're like mini donut balls. They come like regular glazed chocolate. I feel like if you live at the Duncan in your town, I feel like you've had a munchkin. People bring them for birthday parties. People bring them into work. They come in like this cute little, cute little carrying case. <laughs> Also during the 1990s, Duncan bought out other donut shops to crush down the competitors. One of which was called Mr. Donut, which was owned by, I believe, Bill's brother-in-law, Harry. And they just bought him out. They said, the family business is going to be Duncan. So I don't know why you're starting a Mr. Donut? How about you donut open your doors anymore and we will buy you out as a company. 2004, uh, they created the Duncan brand, which owned Duncan and Baskin, which makes sense. Somewhere along the line, I could not pinpoint the exact like year they did it. They started merging Baskin Robbins and Duncan Donuts together. So you could get like an ice cream cake or you could get, you know, a hot coffee. It makes sense. They're both in the dairy business, but now I'm seeing more and more that the Duncans are just standalone Duncans. So I don't know what's going on there. In 2019, they dropped the donuts. Now they're just Duncan. Everybody gets straight. So no more Dunkin' Donuts, just Dunkin'. Because they want to be known for more than just the donuts. They want to be a beverage-led company. Dunkin' was bought by a parent company called Inspire Brands, who I've actually worked for. I have done brand deals for Dunkin' in the past. I've worked with Inspired Brands. I don't know, I was thrown in my own fun fact today. Uh, they bought Dunkin' for $11 billion. Is this thing on $11, 11 billion? billion dollars. Dollar. Holy cannoli. I wish they sold cannolis. It's hard to pinpoint exactly how many locations they have and where they are. There's around 13,200 locations, 40 in the global markets, uh, which include places like Guatemala and the Bahamas. The logo originally, I think when it first became Dunkin' Donut, 
donuts. The logo was a donut man, a man made of donuts. That would be a fun Halloween costume, a throwback to the Duncan logo. Like his legs were made out of like twisted bread donuts. It's very cute and endearing and at the same time somehow a little scary. I'm just thinking of like this is like a bread boy. Dough man. Dough man bread boy. Not to be mixed up with the Pillsbury dough boy. That one's cute. In 1961 is when they started like the more current logo. The Dunkin' Donuts, the white, the pink, the orange, the you know. I like orange and pink. I like the colors of Dunkin' Donuts. Now if it was orange and purple, my two favorite colors, maybe I'd like it even a little bit more. Can't believe it's snowing outside. What is going on? The slogan of Dunkin' is America runs on Dunkin'. But in 2006, the slogan used to be it's worth the trip. I must have seven Dunkin' Donuts within a 20 mile radius of me. I, it, it's worth the trip. It's everywhere I go. It's on every corner. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. The Dunkin' man turns the light on and I'm like a gnat attracted to a light. I get electrocuted because they're like, hey, stop going there. You don't need coffee. It's 9 p.m. at night. There are 25,000 ways to order a coffee at Dunkin'. I pretty much get the same thing every time. 60% of their revenue comes from coffee, which is probably why someone in that board meeting that one day was like, let's just take off the donuts. That's dead weight. If you sell coffee, people probably assume you also sell donuts. It's a little redundant. Whoever that person was, give them a box of munchkins or a raise. I would love to look that person in the face. Oh, you took off the donuts and Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> they had to change every single sign on every single Dunkin' <laughs> for years. It took them years to take the donut part off the sign. It's crazy. <laughs> At one point, they had a donut that was made for dunking, even had a handle on the donut, which makes me think that it would have to be a pretty stiff donut to make part of the donut used as a handle. Dunkin' is tied to lots of sporting teams, the Dallas Cowboys, the New York Yankees, the Liverpool Football Club, and they are also the official hot, iced, and frozen coffee of the National Women's Hockey League. 2009, they had alternative slogans pop up. One was, you can do it! I don't know what that means. You could buy the coffee. And with that slogan, they launched a hundred million dollars ad campaign around it. Let me know in the comments if you've ever heard Dunkin' tied to the slogan, you can do it. We say, with a cup of Dunkin' Donuts coffee, you can do it. Because otherwise, if you've never heard of it, they wasted a hundred million dollars of an ad campaign. Other weird donuts that they have in their international locations, if you go to Peru, you could get a pistachio rainbow donut. I love pistachios. I would love to try that donut. In China, you could get a pork floss donut. And if you ever watch, I think, Good Mythical Morning, I think the boys have tried it on there. It's dried pork with seaweed crumbs. Imagine eating that on the way to work. First customer you talk to with that breath. Hey, I saw you looking at that piece of pottery. We just put that on the shelf. Just threw it in the kiln yesterday. No, I'm good. That breath could crack every piece of pottery in here. That's something else. That's about it. If Duncan was my ex, they would have a restraining order out on me. The amount of Duncan that I buy, I probably pay rent on at least two locations. Getting a little out of hand. I recognize the problem. Duncan Donuts is my enabler. <laughs> but someone wants to have an intervention. I know who shouldn't be invited to the table. It's Duncan. My earliest memory of a Duncan Donuts, my dad used to order these things called Dunkachinos, which basically was a half hot chocolate, half coffee. But I haven't seen it on a menu since I was a child. It sounds so simple. I remember it being the best thing in the world. And also like my dad was letting me have a small Dunkachino as like an eight-year-old. As much as I go to Dunkin', I have a love-hate relationship with Dunkin'. I just like to get their iced coffee, okay? Get little flavorings in it. The thing with Dunkin' is they never bring back the good flavors. You look up a Reddit thread, you look in their comments, people are always like, bring back the, the flavors. They, they used to have flavors of iced coffee like cookie dough flavor. Uh, they had like the Girl Scout Thin Mint flavor. They take them away and they never bring them back, okay? Puts a little sour taste in my mouth. And yet the whole food menu keeps expanding. I don't think I've ever really tried Dunkin's food besides the hash browns. The hash browns are good. They're right up there with McDonald's hash browns, in my opinion. I usually get cold brew with caramel, and then they put the cold foam on top and a little sprinkle of cinnamon, or I get a medium iced coffee, caramel, mocha, cream, and sugar. No modifications, no numbers tumble out of my mouth, nothing. Medium iced coffee, caramel, mocha, cream, and sugar. Thank you so much. I'll see you at the window. Boom. So we're gonna go try the food today. Let's go. I also need to clean off my car. I move the seat forward. I had to move the seat back because the costume's so big. Okay, for the sake of not messing up my own routine I got with my Dunkin' locations, I'm going to random Dunkin's. Oh, this one is a Dunkin' and a Baskin Robbins. Look at that. Can I do one of the avocado of the stuffed? Can I do the blueberry Americano croissant stuff. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Okay, I thought they were like borderline laughing at me, but then they both come out of the window. They're like, have a good one. And I was like, oh, you too. Thank you so much. There's so many smells in this car, and none of it smells like what I ordered. Okay, I found myself a snowy little parking lot to sit in. I don't think they gave me a receipt. They did not. Let's start off with the hot item. Cute little Dunkin' Cups. This is just an Americano. I don't even know what that is. This smells so strong and yet so stale. I only ever get iced coffee pretty much everywhere I go, 99% of the time. I don't get anything hot from Dunkin'. The last things I got hot from Dunkin' were like Dunkachinos. We all know what happened there. I am a little salty about it. This is an Americano. The type of coffee drink prepared by diluting an espresso shot with hot water at a one to three, one to four ratio. And I didn't get any cream sugar in it. Some people drink this every day. 
I can see why it wakes you up. Good Lord, that's like drinking gravel. It has no flavor. It tastes burnt. It tastes like a cigarette I had when I was drunk in college. Smoking's not cool. And yet, hey, can I grab one of those? Who are you, the main character in a movie? What are we doing? No flavor. Y'all don't get a, a shot of flavor in here. Y'all don't get cream and sugar. And maybe I just have a horrible palate. Yes, I admittedly, I like the sugar. I don't really even drink coffee for the coffee. I drink it for the sugar. Caramel mocha, cream and sugar. Yes, I will be the first one to admit that. Of course. Of course it's more of a sweet tooth than a coffee tooth, okay? But this? Drinks like this scar me so that I go running for the hills. I go running for the sugar hills of Candyland. This ain't doing it for me. This would wake me up, but it would wake me up and put me in a bad mood. It's also just like sitting on my tongue. I haven't taken a sip in a, like a minute. This Americano went into my mouth and then beat up my taste buds. There are like stained with the flavor of the Americano. Not my favorite. I don't even know how much a small was because I didn't get a receipt. I'll have to look up the things. Okay, moving on to a hot item. I don't know if it's hot on the menu as in a lot of people order it. What in the crap is that? It smells like guacamole. Oh, this is the avocado toast. Okay, it must be avocado with uh, everything bagel seasoning. Are we all looking at this? Looks like someone went to go fill the bird feeder in the back and tripped over the guacamole and the whole damn bucket of bird seed fell in. And it's like on a piece of like sourdough. I mean, it's toasted nicely. Like that looks fine. I don't hate everything bagel seasoning. I don't love it. I know there's people who like absolutely die for it. They keep a little jar of it on their person at all times. Avocado toast. Also looks like there's just so much salt on here. Is so much salt. I like avocados, avocado. I love avocado. I can't even talk. I love avocado toast, by the way. I just would never order it here because it doesn't look great. Ew, it tastes like guacamole from a bag. Like, not fresh. It's not Chipotle. They're not back there making guacamole. It's like baby food with salt. The bread's good. The fact that your teeth sink in to a bunch of mush and gush, and then you gotta rip it off, like you're ripping the meat off a dead carcass, is just such a weird mouthfeel. Oh, uh, You know what biting that feels like? You ever go to the dentist, and they gotta make molds of your teeth? They put the foam in the mold, and they make you bite down on the mold? That's what it tastes like, when the guacamole, like, sinks in around your gums, because you're... The avocado is not good. It's not horrible. If a high school cafeteria sold avocado toast, I feel like this is what I would expect from them. And what I expect from Duncan. I don't expect them to be hitting the avocado toast out of the park. So there's that. What else did I order? Where's my straw? I ordered a culotta. I did not know that the culotta was on the Baskin Robbins side of the menu. These are basically just slushies. Maybe I'm wrong. I thought the culottas came in like coffee centric flavors, like a vanilla bean culotta. But when I asked them what flavors they had, they just said blueberry strawberry. A coffee base blended with ice hazelnut and vanilla flavoring so what is this it's a blue raspberry okay well it's on the menu we might as well try it it's so diluted where's the flavor this tastes like you have the slushy machine and it's twirling and twirling and then on the side of the machine there's like all that condensation and it looks like you took a rag and wiped off the condensation and then wrung it out in this cup tastes like the afterthought of a flavor not even the aftertaste it tastes like nothing Where's the damn flavor? What in the hell? I got a brain freeze. This drink feels like some kid showed up to the science fair with their half-ass project. They're like, well, I made a volcano. I'm like, that's the volcano kit I saw at the dollar store. My guy already came assembled. All you had to do was throw some baking soda in the hole. They're like, well, I brought a light bulb to the science fair. I'm like, light bulbs have been invented, my guy. You thought you hit the switch. You were the inventor of the light bulb. You are the keeper of light. What? You thought you did that? You thought you did that? There's nothing there. There's no flavor. There's no taste. If you spent a little less time dying in blue and a little more time putting the flavor in there maybe we could talk why would i want to walk around why would i want to walk around that's a tongue twister why would i want to walk around with a blue tongue as like a badge of honor for drinking this blue raspberry runoff water no it better be a damn good drink if it's gonna dye my tongue i better be like oh yeah they're like what are you drinking the blue culotta i'm like uh the blue culotta i couldn't put it down so good i don't care if i come into work with a blue tongue and blue teeth because the culottas are that good no these are everything bagel stuffed cream cheese bites i've wanted to try these they look interesting the surface of them looks a little beat up like maybe a little like freezer burnt <laughs> you can kind of tell like it's been cooked and frozen and then shipped over let's try it I, it's, it's okay. It's pretty good. I don't know if I like warm cream cheese. I don't really even like my bagels toasted. I'm kind of in the camp that I just like the bagel as is, and then the cream cheese can be cold because the cream cheese comes from the fridge. But once you put it, stuff it in a bagel, it's been sitting for a while, then you heat it up. It kind of gets like a little curdly, little curdly, which is, it's fine. It's still good. I can not think about it and it'll be fine. Like the cream cheese isn't oozing out of there, which I wouldn't want it to ooze out. I don't want like that liquidy cream cheese when it's been sitting in the fridge for a while and you got to stir it up, get some of that water off the top. It's good. That cream cheese is thick. I can see 
you getting these? And you gotta put a little hot sauce on them. You gotta put a, like a little sriracha mayo on them. Get a little more like a kick of a flavor in there. Oh, I don't even know what I ordered. I didn't know they even had these. I got flustered by the menu. This I believe is a ham and cheese croissant, stuffed croissant. I don't even like ham. There is some cheese on top. I feel like the croissant part's gonna be good. Let's try this. Looks like some of the ham's leaking out on this side. So we'll try it from the leakage. That sounds gross. The ham leakage. It's actually very good. So simple. Is that like Asiago cheese? Oh, I love Asiago cheese. I don't even know, I didn't even look. Little hollow, like how the cream cheese bites were hollow. That's not bad though. It's warm, flaky. Mmm. Oh, I am not upset by that. <laughs> I'm just straight up eating the whole thing and not even talking about it. You go to Dunkin' and you're ever hungry? Try the stuffed ham and cheese croissants. It's pretty fucking good. Okay, I'm at the second location. I've never been, <clears throat> I've never been to this duck. Whoa, what am I choking on? Here's what happened. This is how I saw you last time. Popped a pimple under my nose. Got a reoccurring pimple there. Didn't know if you saw that. A little bit of a whitehead. My apologies. Popped it on the way there. Kind of gross. Let's hand sanitize her up. Went to the second Dunkin' location. Wanted to get the omelet bites. I heard people actually eat the omelet bites. And I thought either they're going to be the grossest thing ever. Or they would actually be pretty fantastic. They didn't have them. So I had to make a quick change at the menu and whatever I got reeks of maple syrup. I think it's like a pancake taco thing. I think it's new. I've never seen it on the menu. It looked like they had a big sign for it. I also went to go get um, an iced coffee option because you know I like iced coffee but I tried to find something different and I heard a very popular which I spilled the coffee. I got some of it on the camera. Hopefully you guys can still hear me. I got a small iced coffee. I got coconut and blueberry in it. I saw online or on the Dunkin' Reddit, this is a popular iced coffee to get, is a coconut blueberry. Here's my two gripes. I was supposed to get it with almond milk. That's what the they called for on the internet. Forgot the almond milk. I got flustered with the omelet egg bites move. But also, I like to complain that a lot of the flavors that Dunkin' does try, somehow, some reason, they all kind of taste a little bit like coconut, which I like coconut, but not in my coffee. So I went to purposely try a coconut blueberry coffee to see what happens. This looks like a weird weird type of brown like looks a little thick why is it sour oh it tastes like suntan lotion you got the spray sunscreen and some of it gets in your mouth and you're like oh my god give me a cracker i need to soak up i just got chemicals in my mouth sometimes no this is between you and me if you're a somewhat frequent customer of dunkin donuts you know that when you get your drinks especially the ice drinks sometimes they're hit or miss sometimes as they're handing the drink to you through the drive-thru you know it's a bad batch of coffee you know it looks weird it's not the right color it's not mixed right something's up something's wrong this is a bad one there's like something sour about this coffee i'm not even tasting the blueberry for one again there's something going on with the blueberry blue flavored things at Dunkin never come out it tastes flat that's disgusting that's gross make the coffee right and stop putting coconut in it those are the two hills I'm gonna die on today and then the last two food items what in the hell is this bro it's already look how badly the bag is sogging I have to, I can't even get it out I'm gonna have to rip the bag open I'm coming for you what the what is this egg on here oh this is what stinks like maple syrup what the fuck what is this Oh, God. Oh. A slab of bacon. Oh, for the look. Cheese. They made a pancake taco. I don't like a lot of fast food eggs, especially when they look like that. And then this cheese on here is burnt. Ew. It tastes okay, but that did not look good. That looked like veiny as hell. I mean, zero flavor. The temperature hit me harder than the flavor. Its flavor was just warm. What is this pancake? Of all the bread options we've had today, the croissant, the egg bites, this is the worst breaded thing I've ever seen there. How come it reeks of maple syrup and it doesn't even taste like maple? Duncan, where's all the flavor? In the items. Okay, this is all stuff that I could make in my house. Yes, granted, most breakfast food you can make at your house. But usually you'll get breakfast food because of the flavors. Oh my gosh, I love this aioli they put on their breakfast sandwich. Oh my gosh, the way they infused those McGriddles with maple syrup. That's something crazy. That's something I haven't figured out. How to what was that? That feels like a 2 a.m. drunken sort of thing. You go out, you get drunk, two in the morning, you're scrapping your house for food like a little raccoon. You're gonna put bacon and some old eggs stuck crusted to a wet pancake you found in the microwave that you forgot about, you forgot to throw out because you made special pancakes for your roommate because they're, they're gluten-free pancakes, but who, you can't even taste the flavors because there is no flavors, okay? Then you throw it in the microwave for five, 10 seconds, so the only flavor you do get is the warm flavor of it burning your tongue. It tastes like nothing! Who, who, who did that? Look at this square looking rejection <laughs> toaster strudel pop tart that came out of there this is a treso and egg breakfast sandwich i either saw a comment or someone in real life in my face was like you have to try one of these these are really good oh it smells like there's some spice in there it smells like it should have some great flavor okay here we go why is it all mush and gush you want to at least separate the chorizo from the that's all bread 
This looks like the inside of a baby's diaper, and they damn near wrapped it like one. This looks gross. Like, I don't... All I'm getting is, like, cheese and a little bit of an aftertaste of, like, some spice that's sitting in the back of my throat. This is how you want to start your day? This looks like this coming in. Could you imagine what it looks like coming out? You know what is crazy about this is that, like, if you made this at your house, it would automatically look better. I don't know how to explain it. Like, you, you couldn't achieve this level of, again, mush and gush, my favorite thing to say. You couldn't achieve this level of mush and gush at your house. Because this has been mushing and gushing inside this flaky-ass wrapper for a while. If you made this fresh, it would automatically look and taste better. Duncan is known for coffee. They've been expanding the breakfast menu. I don't expect a lot out of them. I'm not expecting to be wowed. But wowee, what is this? If you are eating that, I need you to fight for it in the comments. Maybe you got bad eyesight. Maybe you're really not seeing what it is. Maybe you're like, hey, you smother it in hot sauce. Tastes pretty good. How did they turn that into a paste? It's borderline impressive how unappetizing that looks. I think that'll do it. I might just stick to my coffee order. The okay, you know what? I will give it to the ham and cheese croissant thing. I don't know if they had another flavor of it. I don't think they did. Of course, one of the good things on the menu comes in one option. They could have like a, sus a sausage, a sausage, a sausage stuffed one. Maybe, I don't know if it'd work that way. I wasn't expecting a lot. They've literally self-proclaimed themselves as a drink-centric, drink-focused company. I really have never been drawn to the breakfast menu, and I think I got good instincts here. But comment down below if you go to Dunkin' what you get here, especially if it's a food-related item. Otherwise, put down your coffee order. Maybe we'll do another one of those, like, uh, trying my subscriber's coffee orders at Dunkin'. That'd be fun. Do your own little Never Have I Ever and try Christine Snap's order, okay? And then get the hash browns. Ooh, those are good. And then please like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Let me know where I should go next, okay? Let a girl know. And don't steer me wrong. Maybe if I drink these together, I could get one single flavor molecule of a blueberry. That tasted like how it feels when you wake up from a nightmare. A little disoriented. Oh! If my taste buds was a person, they'd probably slash my tires. No more of these food videos! Stop doing that to us! That is so rude. It's 10 a.m. You would think there'd be a lot of flavors to these food items for amount of smells in this car. Duncan, we've got the smells, not the flavor. Duncan, everything kind of tastes like coconut. Duncan, America runs on Duncan. Disclaimer, they might be running towards the bathroom because we put paste and no flavors into our food.